Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1501. Life is the toughest teacher because you learn the lesson after you take the test. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and so excited to share with you today a very special guest calling in from Huntersville, North Carolina, Mike Mooney. It would be easy to say that Mike Mooney's career in the motorsports industry has been going in circles for over 25 years. Mike has built a reputation for creating brand, athlete, and sports proprietary distinction by launching and leading award-winning marketing and communications campaigns. He has represented many highly regarded brands, including Mercedes-Benz, 3M, Tylenol, Walmart, Eli Lilly, and Fifth Third Bank. His breakthrough book, Reputation Shift, Lessons from Pit Road to the Boardroom, delivers practical and ready-to-use personal branding and reputation-building strategies for people who want to ensure personal and professional success. I think I should read that. He is also recognized for his work in crisis and reputation management having led dozens of crisis recovery efforts over his career. Hopefully, I won't need that someday. I'll be back in just a minute to talk with Mike, but first a word from our valued sponsors that make Cars Yeah! possible. Hey, Cars Yeah! I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft seat covers. They'll protect your seats from the daily abuse of pets, children, weekend adventures, and even those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. All Covercraft seat covers are easy-on, easy-off design that are machine washable. You can choose from many fabric options, colors, and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicles. Their seat gloves are semi-custom fit for cars and trucks, and their seat savers, a favorite of mine, are custom-tailored to fit your seats like a glove. Work truck seat covers are tough, durable, denim weight fabric. It's like putting a pair of rugged jeans on your truck's seats. Want to stay warm? Covercraft also offers seat heaters. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you a Cars Yeah subscriber? If you're not, go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send you my free filler up book. It's a very cool book I created of fuel filler fun, some very cool imagery, and great quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get my weekly email follow up and my weekly blog. Just go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send it to you right away. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, Mike, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Hey, Mark, I am uh, I'm buckled in, pulled the straps tight, ready to go, my friend. Okay, I'll try to keep it on the road here. <laughs> Would you tell our listeners, uh, before we jump into some questions, maybe a little bit more about yourself and your business and what you enjoy doing? Goodness, uh, I'd be happy to. And first off, let me just thank you for, for having me on your show. Uh, very, very excited. I've been looking forward to this for a while. So, you know, as a kid from uh, from Long Island, New York, who found himself by way of college in North Carolina and then ultimately in the motorsports world. It's been quite a quite a run for me in terms of a, of a career and not something at all what I thought I'd be doing in motorsports from NASCAR to IndyCar and drag racing and, and racing uh, circles like that. So uh, glad to be here with you and uh, happy to uh, share some thoughts and ideas of what I have going on in my career now that I've left this uh, world of going in circles to actually actually be home on some more weekends, which is an interesting thought, but be able to get out there and talk to people about the power of reputation and uh, how we can use that to blow open doors of opportunities in our lives. Oh, absolutely. Especially these days, as uh, open as we all are out there in the social media world, sometimes things leak out that we go, oh, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have done that. Yes. So uh, especially yeah. during this uh, this political time as an election comes, oh my gosh, all the things people say, and you just go, Oh, why did you say that? So um, where did yeah, that come they, from? And and that that's really where a lot of this came from, Mark. To be honest, was having dealt with so many reputation and crisis issues over the years, it really became clear to me that reputation management was was more of a reactive process of asking what now 
instead of a proactive approach, which is the what if and thinking ahead. And that's really where I'm trying to shift uh, the mindsets because so much could be uh, saved in terms of livelihoods and legacies and careers and businesses if we just stop to, to think proactively. Absolutely. I love it. Well, tell our listeners maybe one little thing that most people don't know about Mike Mooney. <laughs> I would say watch what you say, though. You know, your reputation's about, on the line. It, it is. It is. <laughs> you know, I would say probably most people don't know that I, I intermittent fast with my meals oh, and that I okay. and I meditate every day. Yes. Yeah. No, that's for it. Yeah, you know, I've heard a lot of people uh, that I've had on the show do that. I need to learn how to do that. I've tried it. I just can't get my brain around it for some reason. But maybe you can direct me in another time in the right direction because I think it's a really important thing. It, it takes time. Though. Was that wrapping your head around the meditating or the uh, the fasting? <laughs> well, the fasting, I understand. Just don't eat. The right, meditating, right. yeah, that one, yeah. Uh, the the meditating is what I was referring to, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It does take practice. And, and, and you're constantly, uh, it's a challenge. But man, I, I love it to start the day with that and get your intentions uh, in the right order. And just having a little bit of time for yourself before, again, the uh, the craziness starts to set in is just invaluable, my friends. Uh, yeah, I have no doubt about that. Let's start by asking you for a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. I like to say it's a great way to get the inspirational tires turning here on cars. Yeah. So Mike, grab the wheel. Yeah. So I would say that the the phrase for me, and, and I'll be honest with you, Mark, I, I can't find who actually said this first. So so here's the deal. Uh, if you like it, you can attribute it to me three times. And after that, it's yours. Okay. okay. How about I'll that? I'll do that. So here's yeah. how it goes. Life is the toughest teacher because you learn the lesson after you take the test. Ah, I like that. Yeah. How have you wrapped that into what you do in your business and helping others? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to be selfish for a second. And I'll tell you, it's helped me a lot just in my career pivot. You know, having been in motorsports for 25 years and built an identity in, in a particular industry doing a certain particular focus of work to step away and now get into this world of keynote speaking and coaching and consulting. And this idea that, you know, mindset matters. And that phrase, that quote always brings my mindset back to the fact that we're always learning. And sometimes those, those lessons are tough and, you know, we have to be open. And not not get on ourselves to say, oh, man, you screwed that up. But OK, OK, got it. Good lesson to learn. I won't do that again. And yeah, in terms of how I bring that forth to, to people I work with purely through coaching, you know, it's amazing how many leaders out there, the mindset isn't quite on that learning gauge. It's really more on that, you know, what you didn't get done, the gaps that you didn't hit instead of, OK, what did I learn that's actually going to help me get smarter, better and more efficient and effective? You know, what comes to mind lots of times is people get so set in their mindset, they don't allow themselves to either listen or change. Is that something you run up against? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the fa well, it all comes down to this idea of, of the comfort zone. And we tend to like to stay there. And that's really where our brains like us to stay because it's safe. And the idea of breaking out of that comfort zone to pursue continuous improvement and finding ways to stretch and put ourselves out there. I mean, my other mantra for, for the year is to continue to find ways to put myself in uncomfortable positions, not, not morally <laughs> yeah. or financially or right, right. anything, but really trying to find those places where I can get uncomfortable because I know that A, it's not going to kill me and B, I'm going to grow in some, some ways I'd never imagined. So, you know, I, I do, I see that a lot, uh, with, with, uh, successful people and leaders that, Hey, listen, it's worked this long. Why, why, why change it up? Uh, yeah. Uh, kiss of death when mm -hmm. it comes to business with that mindset, for sure. I had a guest on the show years ago that said to me, my goal every year, the first of the year, when you set your resolutions is to fail a hundred times this year. Wow. Meaning, yeah, which is pretty broad and pretty bold. Yeah. But meaning uh, she wants to go out and try a hundred new things. And she knows she'll probably fail the first time, but at least she's tried something new. And I, I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Oh, I love it. it it's bold. It's bold. Yeah. And and that there is, is stepping out on, on that limb where, where few people would, would actually have the courage to go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, try interviewing people five days a week that you've never even met. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'd like to say I can understand, but but I can't. I can't. But but you're right. 
you're right, Mark, you know, but that puts you in those positions that, you know, I'm sure, you, you, you know, the, the type of interviewer you are today at interview 1501 is not the same interview you were at guest number one, was it? I sure hope, I sure hope I've gotten better. I maybe asked my listeners about that, but no, definitely it's become easier. Uh, I always say what I do is like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. I never know what I'm going to get, but it always tastes good and it's always rewarding. So, uh, but, well, hey, listen, yeah. man, we're still early in this one. So, uh, oh, okay, <laughs> <you> okay, <laughs> you, you, could, you could end up with that chocolate one that's been sitting in there for too long. You're like, oh, what is this? Yeah, or I'm not a fan of coconut, and that's the worst <laughs> one for me to buy. Like, oh no, I got a piece of coconut. Ugh. So, yeah. Well, let's talk for a minute about this new book of yours, Reputation Shift, Lessons from Pit Road to the Boardroom, which I love the title, by the way. Thank you. Uh, tell, yeah, tell our listeners a little bit about what encouraged you to write this book and what it's about and why we should get our hands on the book as well. Absolutely, Mark. And, and again, thank you for that. You know, what I said earlier about where the idea came from of, of this this uh, notion of shifting our perspective from looking at our reputations, which, by the way, are one of the greatest assets that any of us have, quite honestly. But we, we typically, you know, again, look at it from a reactive mindset. I wanted to put forth a resource, a roadmap and guide for people that really wanted to take hold of and build intentionally and deliberately build the reputation that they would want. I say that, and it's funny, I, I was questioned once and said, well, isn't, isn't that being disingenuous by trying to build your own reputation and, and create it? The short answer is that, well, we've all seen people that are chameleons that act one way in one situation with one group and, and others in another way. But, but if you come from your, a place of values, if you come from that center of what matters to you and you're living out your values in an in a intentional way, day in and day out, consistently over time, that's the reputation that we should all strive to build. And in that, there's nothing disingenuous in that. That's being authentic. So the idea of helping people build these authentic reputations that are truly theirs was a mission that I wanted to move forward with. And I, and I happened to do that by unpacking five strategies in the book through the experiences and stories that I had firsthand through my career in motorsports. So there's some, some good stories in there, Mark. I think you'd, you'd definitely enjoy. Oh, absolutely. No, oh, it sounds fascinating. And Right. Reputation is everything. And we've all had those people in our lives that say one thing, do another, the chameleons, as you call, call them. And it's like, oh, geez. But we've had others that are great. And even if they're a little wacky or goofy or unusual, you always know it's authentic. They are who they are. That is who they are. And there's something right. refreshing about that as well. So. Well, it certainly is. And if I were to ask you now, Mark, you know, it's just for fun, I'll flip the script on you here. If to put a dollar value on your reputation, how much is it worth to you? Priceless. Yeah, mm -hmm. priceless. Yeah, it definitely is because uh, without it, everything you've done up to that point is a failure because it becomes in question. Exactly. And, and, and it, it's true. You know, when, I, when I ask that question, I'll get usually three answers. One is what you said there, which is that it's priceless, and, and I, I would agree. Uh, the other I usually get from financial people. They'll say, "Oh, it's 10x my current salary." <laughs> you know, so they're trying to quantify it, and yeah. and even then, yeah. I said, "Man, you've just undervalued it big time." Right. And, and then the third that I love, and this is what I love about the work I get to do, is the answer is, "Wow, I never thought of it like that." You know, and it's it's shifting that perspective because the reality is that we rarely really place the value on our reputation until after we've paid the price. So why wait till that point? Exactly. Yeah. And, why and, learn that difficult lesson? Well, you learn it the hard way, you know, and, and it's not just for companies and brands anymore. You know, this is really about people. If you think about it, if you are running a company, your company hasn't built a reputation. The reputation of your company is built upon the shoulders of every single person that shows up every single day representing your brand. So if they're not mindful of their reputation, surely they're not mindful of the reputation they're building for the organization that you're leading or that you've started or, or that you're, you're part of. So it, it, it's vital across the board. Absolutely. What's the favorite thing uh, for you about what you do in your career and your business? Yeah, you know, I, I love conversations like this, quite honestly, Mark, where mm -hmm. we can share ideas and perspectives, get better. I love helping people get to places. This is the coaching part of it in me that I've always loved is helping them get to a place they never thought they could reach or be, whether that be on their own or with their company. I get great satisfaction out of helping people get to a new or better place. 
And if it's through a keynote, if it's through a workshop or through my coaching, that is, that's the greatest thrill for me. Yeah. There's nothing better than being rewarded by somebody saying, wow, uh, you inspired me, you moved me, you caused me to take positive action. That is a huge reward. I get that from time to time here when I have great guests on and like you. And uh, somebody will say, man, I listen to Mike. And because of that, I made a bold step. And this is what happened in my life. And there is nothing better than getting an email or having somebody walk up to you on a Concord lawn or at a racetrack and tell you that. And you just go, wow. That's Isn't that great? Cool. No, I mean, it, it is. I really believe that we're all here to help reflect and shine and ignite light in each other, whatever that might be. And it might be just a simple word, a courtesy, grace, or a gesture, or it could be in something more instrumental in helping somebody in their career or, you know, bringing them along or opening a door for them. I just, I truly believe that that is really what we're, we're here. I mean, we're in this together, man. It, it's, it's plain and simple. And unfortunately, the way that this world is working right now and as quickly as it's going and with social media and Everything coming at us, it, we often find ourselves living in silos and feeling more disconnected than how we, we were really wired and built, which is to, to connect. Yeah. You know, you discovered something here that it took me a while to discover after interviewing so many people. And I do a number of keynote speeches as well, which I'm really grateful to be invited to these things. And I share stories that people have shared with me, but the end result is what I call the secret to a happy life. And you just answered or told us what that secret is, and that I've learned that we as human beings are truly happiest when we give back to others. Whether we recognize it or not, that is the point in our lives that make us feel human and real and alive and worth something. And I hear it over and over and over here. People who've been on my show that have figured that out. Some people figure it out young in their lives. Some people, it takes a whole lifetime mm -hmm. before they get there and they realize, I need to start giving back. I had a great guest on the show once who was very selfish about his life. In fact, he was a hell's angel, Tim Medvets, motorcycle guy, wow. motorcycle builder of the stars, dated Cher for four years. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, just kind of wild, crazy life. And I won't give away the story. Listeners need to go back and listen to it. But one of the things he said was, I figured out my life wasn't the Tim show. Mm. It was about helping others. So and true. that's when I woke up. So, yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a short break. Thank our sponsors. We'll be right back with another question. Hang tight. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts? around the globe, I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy to read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know. Everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt. And it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover 
and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we are back. So what I want you to do now, Mike, is talk about a big challenge or even a big failure that you faced along the way. It could be your life, career, wherever you want to take us. But the most important part of the story needs to be the lesson learned. It should be pretty easy for you. This is something we've talked about already. How did you overcome that situation? And how did that experience help you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career, your business, your life? I would say, Mark, without a doubt, my career pivot. You know, February 15th marked my two-year anniversary of going out uh, on my own. That p- career pivot was one of the scariest, hairiest gut check moments in my life because, you know, I- I'm a planner and-, and I had things lined up of what I was going to do and how I was going to make this transition, even to-, to the point where I had I had six people that had said, Mike, when you're ready to launch, man, we're going to, we're, we're in, we want you to come work with us and, and, and be part of the, the part of our program as a consultant and all that good stuff. And then when I jumped out and re- re- reproached all of those six people, Mark, how many of those, how many of those opportunities do you think uh, came <laughs> yeah. through? Yeah, probably maybe one or maybe none. It, it was a round yeah. number. I'll make it easy. It was a round okay. number. Okay. okay. And yeah. that, and that's when stuff got real. And I realized that, you know, I was no longer on the biweekly steady of income. Uh, oh, we had yeah. savings, but, you know, we didn't want to tap into things right away. No, but Been there, done that. It's right? scary as hell. Yeah. And we had uh, my wife, uh, Krista, and I had uh, two, three children. We had two getting ready for college, one in high school. Oh, and, yeah. you know, when all those pieces didn't come together, she looked at me and said, um, OK, so what do we do in 30 days? What do we do in 45 days? Most men and my wife, Chris, and we've been married now 24 years. Um, she is my best friend, partner in crime. Couldn't be doing this without her, without a doubt. Love her to death. But what I told her was, and this is the lesson. This is the lesson. I said, I don't know what happens in 30, 45, 60 days. Because if I'm worried about those dates, I'm not focused on today. And that's the only day that I can put my energy and effort and heart into. So, so the lesson was the power of today. And showing up, showing up every day to do the work. Because if you show up every day and you do the work, and the right work, the right work, because we we tend to confuse busyness with impact, and there's a big difference between being busy and being impactful. And that was another big lesson. So maybe I packed two lessons in here. But but the, the idea, Mark, was that being present in today and doing the work that I had to get done, and then you know what? Being content with that and showing up again the next day and doing it again. Yeah. Life of an entrepreneur, consistency, persistence, tenacity, yes. grit, yes. all that combined yes. uh, is definitely a part. Well, you had a, a few of my nerve cells there because when I started this, it was the same thing. First time, I, time in my life, I didn't have an income. My son was in a very expensive college, uh, family members that had become ill. I mean, it's all these things kind of caving in and and I got this wild idea to start a podcast. <laughs> Some of my friends looked at me and go, what? Right, right. <laughs> But, but, but here's what I'll tell you, Mark. Here's the other thing I learned too, man, and, and I believe this with every bit of my, my fiber and being, man, is that there's no experience or emotion ever wasted, ever wasted, because the experience is going to sharpen our saw and the emotion is going to strengthen our resolve. And those are the things that we, again, each challenge is only preparing us for the next one. Like I'll unpack that a little more, right? When when people have said, oh, wow, you wrote a book. You must be like super disciplined to have written that. I'm like, no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. But you know what? Again, my, my dear wife, who I've been talking about writing this book for years, and one day she said, Mike, how's that book coming along? Said, oh. <laughs> Ouch. Uh-huh. And then she, <laughs> knows how to get, she knows how to get to me. And I said, well, oh, maybe, course. you know, look, I'm traveling to 28 races a year. You know, I'm on the road. We got all the stuff going on. She's like, okay, well, that's fine then. So you're not going to write it. Let's just enough with the book and let's move on. That sat with me. And, Challenge and, on, baby. Right. I said, okay, well, I'm going to figure this out. And look, I was never a morning person, but I started getting up at 4.45 in the morning and I would write from 5 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. because that's when we'd get the kids up in the morning. So I didn't want the book to disrupt the family life. So, you know, Mark, I wrote from 5 to 6.15 a.m., seven days a week for seven months straight. 
There you go. That was it. Yeah. So, you, you know, <laughs> you just that there again, that, that, that's not like, hey, pat yourself on the back, Mike. It's nothing more than saying, look, I didn't do anything. There's no magic to it other than show up every day and do the work and show up again the next day and do the work. And before you know it, that experience, that resolve, that muscle that's been built, then you realize, wow, I really am using that today in this next phase because there are bigger challenges in front of me, but I feel like I can, I can show up and get the job done. Yeah. Just show up and get the job done. Well, I've had many, many hundreds of writers, authors on this show, and they all say the same thing. Sit down and write every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sit down and write every yeah. day. It's like a race car driver. Get your butt in the seat. Do laps. A uh, dancer, get on your toes, get up and dance. Yeah. It's just doing the work. I say just being a little flippant there, but you just have to. You do. For sure. You do. How about your personal passion for cars? Let's get back <laughs> to cars a little bit here. I'd love for you to share a story that is, a, I like to say, a pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were a car guy. I, I grew up on uh, Long Island, uh, New York, and, and my dad was was a racer from like the early days, was also then like a tech inspector at Islip uh, Speedway back in the 60s. I mean, this guy, he was wow. a motorhead, motorhead, motorhead. Oh, yeah, actually was uh, involved with uh, the Griffith uh, car and, and worked with Mark Donahue back when they were doing R&D work. It's oh my gosh. a great story. Yeah, you, you need to connect with him at some point. He'd be, he'd be yeah. a great one to talk to. Love to. But here's the thing, Mark, is that I was like as far away of mechanically inclined as you could be from my dad. So for me growing up, I, it was always the idea of working on cars was sitting in the cold garage with the torpedo heater going and handing my dad the wrong wrench time after time. And he wouldn't even have to look. He'd just pull out the right one and get after it. So I was like, man, I don't know where I fit in this. And, you know, it was when I was like 11 or 12, and it took me to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, to the car show there, that I realized that my passion for cars wasn't necessarily under the hood. I appreciated the horsepower and and the design. But but for me, it was, it was the body lines, man. I fell in love with, with the car design itself and just that flow of what they look like in the arc of the vehicle. And once I saw that and, and a, a guy let me go up, uh, it was a, I remember um, Mustang, beautiful Mustang. And I was just in awe of it and was like wanting to touch it, but I could tell he was looking at me and finally he's like, he's like, go, go ahead, go ahead, son. And I, man, as soon as I touched that, oh, it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. So that's when I fell in love and um, never looked at cars the same, man. I mean, even the race cars, you know, I've always been just, I love the lines, you know? Sure. Yeah, the aesthetic of it. The craftsmanship. Yeah. Is there a first special vehicle in your life, a car that you got that you went, man, I've always wanted this. I finally have it. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't so much I always wanted it, but it was actually it was a 71 MG Midget my dad got for me when I was 15, and that was our project car. And it was a kind yeah, of fun. car <laughs> that literally, you know, you could hold the newspaper on the outside of the driver's side door, and then you could read it from the passenger side door, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. So it was yeah, one of those. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those, man. And we we spent like a year and a half working on that car and, and restoring it and learning how to, you know, just, just do the spot welding and, and rivets and Bondo, lots of Bondo. And I mean, that, that was great. It was a great project. And, and the cool thing with that is my dad at the time knew these guys, Pete Markovici and Ted Wenz, who were uh, big motor guys in the sports car world and high performance world. And they were out of uh, Ronkonkoma, Long Island, which was not far from where we were and where my dad grew up. So they actually retuned and, and rebuilt and bored out that MG Midget engine. So I think it might have been the only MG that had a Markovici Wenz uh, engineering engine in it. It was great. Yeah, so. sounds like it. You get into people's heads. I'm going to get into your head a little bit here and ask you to answer this question. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, actually manifested as a vehicle, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself as a vehicle, what would Mike Mooney be and why? Yeah, I would go with early 70s Bronco. Okay, why is that? That's what I would go with. Well, you know, man, they, they were they were versatile. If you think about those, right, they were versatile, they were reliable, they were steady. They had a great style on their own. I mean, it's a beautiful looking vehicle, you know, and they also had plenty of hustle under the hood, too. You know, there was no shortage of horsepower. Absolutely. You know, I've had a guest on the show here who rebuilds those, kind of reinvents them uh, a lot like Jonathan Ward from Icon does with the Mm. uh, Land Cruisers and uh, makes them kind of a little bit more up to date, but they look retro and everything. Yeah, they're cool. I mean, they're just so 70s. I think back to my high school days, we had a few friends in high school that had those. Just classic. You could pop the top off and become a convertible, basically, on on some of the old models. So it's great. Well, Mike, we are ending what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of that Bronco 
throttle. So here we go. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? I go back to um, positive mindset, meditation, and this idea of strengthening self-talk. Ah, I love it. Now, if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Carol Shelby, without a doubt. Yeah, I think he's probably the second person on uh, most frequently answered, uh, Henry Ford being the first, but definitely Carol Shelby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, the, and the like quick side story on that was in 1970, my dad bought a 65 AC Cobra for, fi- oh. for $1,500. Oh. And <laughs> three weeks after he bought it, my mom said, hey, honey, uh, I'm pregnant and we need to build the extension on the house for the baby. Uh. And dad went back to the guy and said, um, hey, I need that 1500 bucks back. And the guy gave him his money back. So, uh, you know, for years, yeah. I would get calls from dad during the uh, auction saying, yep, another Cobra went for 100000 200000 300000 you know? Half a million. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, look, I've heard those stories from many, many people. Yes. So I did get to tell alone. Carol that, that I met him one time and I got to tell him that story. Oh, funny. So he, he, sure got, a, he got a kick out of it. Yeah, he did. Absolutely. Speaking of automotive advice, what's the best you've ever received? You can't overuse WD-40. <laughs> Hands down. That was the best magic, advice. <laughs> magic stuff that is. Wish I'd invented that. How about a great resource? Is there one you'd like to share with our listeners that you found to be very valuable? Yeah, there's actually there's a, a guy by the name of Ed Milet who has a podcast called Max Out that I like a great deal. Uh, again, because it deals a lot with the mindset that we have every day that we show up with and being able to pursue our best, be our best through not only mindset, but then also the actions we put behind it. It's a great, Mm. great resource. I'll have to look into that. Very cool. Now, aside from recommending this uh, book that you've written here, and I'll remind our listeners, it's titled A Reputation Shift, Lessons from Pit Road to the Boardroom. Is there another book you might recommend that our listeners crack open and read? Yes. Another book I'd really highly recommend, and it gets back to a comment that we that you mentioned earlier that we discussed uh, on the idea of that secret of life. Uh, The book is called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. I'd highly recommend you get it, The Go-Giver. It's the juxtaposition of the go-getter. It's The premise of it is that in order to truly get what it is that we're looking for, we first have to give. And give without hesitation and give because it's the right thing to do and give and give and keep giving, whether it's our time, whether it's contacts, whether it's resources, help or energy, but to give because you will get that back. And, and that is a, an undeniable law in this life. Yeah, it, that's great. I've never been uh, made aware of that book. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. For sure. The Go Giver the by Go-Giver. Bob Berg. Very cool. Yep. Well, listeners, I'll remind you, you can find all these great resources Mike has been so good to share with us today on his Cars yeah! website page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, click in Mike Mooney, just as it sounds, it's spelled M-O-O-N-E-Y, and that page will pop up. All right, Mike, we're up to the checkered flag, and this last question can be a bit of a doozy, but it's a fun thought. I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet, but since I'm paying for this, there's a couple rules. It's the only one cool car you can have in your garage. You have to drive it. No garage queens allowed around here. And you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other cars with or toys or whatever you want or pay for some college tuition. You got to keep it and enjoy it. So what can I get you today? I would love for you to pick me up a Di Tommaso Pantera GT5. Ah, okay. Please, please and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have my you have my mailing address. So let me know when I, uh, I can look for the... Uh, what the, time? The, yeah, it can arrive. Well, I've got a, a, a longtime listener and a sponsor here. Uh, Chris Kimball, he's smiling right now because he listens to the show every morning. He has a Pantera that's been in a, oh. let's, let's call it a state of flux for a little bit. Okay, um, okay. It's been uh, getting restored. It's a point of uh, contention sometimes and a point of joy. <laughs> uh, he's smiling even bigger right now and frowning because as we all know with cars that end up having some issues, uh, they got to be restored and they cost a lot. But of course, your car is going to come to you brand new. Perfect. Now Chris is on the phone calling me going, how come I don't get a new car from you? Well, he has to be on the show, though. So once he gets well, on the he show. Well, he has been a guest on the oh, show. Oh, okay. Well, you yeah. don't want to edit that one out then, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep him as I a know. listener and a friend, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and he also helps my wife and I with our finances. So, yeah, definitely we okay. don't want to, especially with uh, the day we're recording today, the market is playing uh, some dangerous games today. So, uh, yeah, that's what it does. It goes up, it goes down. So that's just the way, just like the car collector market. 
Dita Mazo Pantera GT5. Wow, nice car. Do you have a color preference you'd like that to be? It would be red, of course. Yeah. Red. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. We'll get, get to work. I right. love those because of the combination of the enti- Italian style and the American iron and yes. power. Yes. Uh, yeah. The Pantera, yes. the Dita Mazo Mangusto, which is one of my favorites. Um, I hear they're not too pleasant to drive, though, a little hot and maybe a little squirrely, but uh, that's okay. I'll get to work here. Mike, you've taken us on a great ride today. <laughs> this has been really fun. I I've, knew this would be. It. Well, thank you. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Before I let you go, though, could you offer us a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off down the road in that day to Mazo Pantera? Yeah, love it. Yeah. You know, I, I would say I would say simply this, and, and this, this gets back to the conversation around reputation, Mark, is that there's been no other time in human history where our reputations have been more valuable. But with technology, they've never been more vulnerable or fragile. So at this point in time, I would really encourage you know, your listeners, the leaders out there to be thinking about their reputation personally, you know, some people call it your brand, but really taking a look introspectively to say, you know, where is that right now? And have the courage to ask people about that and call people into your life to help you ensure that you are building the reputation you want and living into the values that you believe in. Nicely said. What's the best way for listeners to follow along with you and reach out to you if they need your help? Uh, sure. They can go to MikeMooney.com. So that's uh, Mike, M-O-O-N-E-Y.com. That's my website. You can buy the book there if you're interested. I'll sign it for you as well and get it out to you. You can also find me on LinkedIn uh, at Mike Mooney, uh, as, as well as uh, on Facebook at Mike Mooney Speaks is another place. Mike Mooney Speaks. There we go. I'll make sure I put all of those links. On Mike's show notes page, in case you're driving and uh, you need to look that up, just come back to the Cars Yeah website, type Mike Mooney in the search bar, and that will follow up. And I encourage you to get a a copy of this book. Uh, I think you'll find it fascinating and wonderful and very enlightening and a lot of learning done there from all the years of Mike uh, chasing cars around circles, (laughs) as we said, going back to the beginning. Mike, thanks again for being so generous today with your time and your experiences and your expertise. It's been a, a real delight. I could talk with you for hours. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go, mm, I think I'm going to try this meditation thing again here. Get after it, man. Get after do? it. Hey, listen, start tomorrow and then try it again the next day and then show up the next day. It's that simple. Mark, th- th- this has been a blast. Thank you for uh, what you're doing and bringing inspiration to people out there in the world. You know, we, we need it every single day and now more than ever. So thank you so much for uh, well, for being that light. Of you. Appreciate that. And until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you down the road. Thank you so much. Hey, Cars Yeah listeners. This is Mark Green. If you love the Cars Yeah podcast, I have something new for you. I've teamed up with Keith Martin, a collector car market expert and the editor of Sports Car Market Magazine to create the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast. Buy, Sell, Hold is the essence of collecting. Together, we take you on an educational ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so you know when to buy, sell, hold. We talk with seasoned experts who buy, sell, and hold investment vehicles, and they'll share their insider secrets on how they make their buying decisions when it comes to making these important investments. You'll find the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast on the Cars yeah! website, on the Sports Car Market website, and if you're a podcast app subscriber to Cars yeah! Buy, Sell, Hold will come right to your mobile device, just like the Cars yeah! podcast, automatically. Join Keith Martin and me on a great new venture on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.